So the first time we see Don Carter is when Tariq pulls up on Braden. Now, when he gets back in his room, he's talking to Braden. Braden got his feet on the floor. I mean, on the bed with his shoes on. But we don't care about nothing that because this is Don Carter. Now, Don Carter is different. The thing about Don Carter is, first of all, people automatically assume that Don Carter is weak just because he's a light-skinned brother. Now, I don't know why light-skinned brothers get this much flack and this much pushback. He's just doing his job. An honest day's worth of work. It ain't much, but it's an honest day's work. work. He calls up Tariq St. Patrick. Now, Tariq St. Patrick answered the phone. He's like, hello, uh, who, 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 who's this? He's like, nigga, this is Don Carter. Who you think it is? Oh, shit, what's up? Don Carter ain't playing around. Now, from Don Carter's perspective, we can reach back to last week where he actually met up with Noma. Now, Kendall was the first person to tip us off that maybe Nico was going to flip on Don Carter. Now, we know that Nico took the $50,000 from Noma and Kane with a million dollars to actually set Don Carter up. But at the end of the episode, we see that Don Carter actually showed up to talk to Noma. So now the plan is put in play between Noma and Don Carter to set up Tariq. Now, Noma is trying to get Monet involved, but the primary target is to get to read. So when Don, he actually calls, I just got to call him Carter because I keep wanting to say Davis. So when Carter calls to read, he's like, listen, there's a rogue drug dealer up in Staten Island. Now we know that Staten Island via our girl Tamika, Tamika told us that's a 40 minute ride. And if he either took the ferry or there's a, there's a bridge or you could take the ferry depending, you know, saying on how long it is, but roughly 40 minutes. So Tariq is like, hey, man, y'all got police officers. Y'all go call them up there. Don Carter said, who the hell you talking to, nigga? I ain't one of your friends. Nigga, I got you. I want you to go up there and get me some names. Now, from Tariq's perspective, I already told y'all, going to an abandoned amusement park doesn't sound like anything I want to do. I automatically think zombies. As soon as you think amusement park that's shut down, you think zombies for some reason. And then you want me to go there at night and get a name of a drug dealer? Well, this is Don Carter's perspective. So we know that he's actually setting Tariq up. Tariq doesn't know this. And Tariq just knows he's working for Don Carter and he has to do what he says. So Don Carter's like, nigga, get your ass up. Tonight, I want answers. I want a name. I want a number. I want to know your name, and I want to know with you. Yeah. Tariq got to go up there, and Don Carter's about to get the damn thing answered. Now, we don't see Don Carter for a while because the administrative group, they're just sitting back and they're watching. But the next time we see Don is right after the whole incident happens because him and Noma had a plan to send Tariq and Monet up there to get set up by the Russians. Now, when we say Russians, you thinking it's about to be a whole clan of Russians. Unfortunately, it's just two Russians. Boss man and his homeboy. Now, that doesn't sound like uh, an efficient crew right there. We've seen the weak ass four horsemen come over here, get knocked off in Chicago. We've seen uh, the Flynn family get knocked off in Chicago. We've seen other Russians get knocked off in New York. We've seen the uh, Gordo family get knocked off in New York. It's going to take more than two people to bring down a St. Patrick and a Tejada. One thing we know about the St. Patrick's and Tejadas, either you catch them off guard or you need an army to bring them down. Now, Lorenzo Tejada went out, but he was caught off guard. Zeke, we don't even remember what Zeke's real last name is, but he's a, uh, I don't even remember what Zeke is. Fucking, oh, Cross. Who the fuck was Ezekiel's parents to name him Ezekiel Cross? But anyway, that's neither here or there. Don Carter said, get your ass up there. So Tariq is like, all right, man. Fuck, I got to go up there. But Don Carter don't give a damn. Now, Noma shows up. Noma shows up to talk 
directly to Don Carter. Now, if you watch closely, go back, watch Nico. Nico is gripping the Thule. Nico's gripping the Thule, letting it be known. If you try anything slick, Noma, pop, pow, I'm on your ass. One down, I shot you down. She's like, um, where are the bodies at? Carter's like, who are you talking to? She said, I'm talking to you because if you work for me, then you two would have the forensics figured fucking out by now. Don Carter said, hey, we ain't in charge of forensics. You need to watch your mouth. She said, oh, you lucky you don't work for me. He said, no, you lucky you don't work for me. We're working together on this. But it might take a couple of days until forensic is done with their job. No one said, we ain't got a couple of days. Monet's been fucking with our business. Monet ends up calling Kane. Now, Don Carter and Nico, they sitting here. Now, I'm not sure where Nico and Don Carter actually sit with each other because we know that Nico felt a certain type of way about Don Carter when it came to the Rashad Tate incident. He also didn't tell Don Carter that he accepted $50,000 cash with a potential $1 million to setting up Don Carter. Now, I don't think that $1 million is going to come through because that $1 million was negotiated between Noma and Kane via Nico. We know that Kane is now on the other side with the family because to how the blood is thicker than water. Now, most of the time they say blood ain't thicker than water, but in this instant it is. So Don Carter is trying to look at Noma as, hey, listen, shut the fuck up. We don't know what the fuck it is. We can only go off of what we have right now, and there's no fingerprints. There's no fucking teeth. So all we can do is just go off of what forensics is saying, but we don't control that. Nico is still hiding the fact that he took that $50,000 and even told Don Carter to his face, oh, they tried to bribe me. They tried to bribe me. They tried to bribe me. They tried to bribe me, but I ain't take no money. Anytime a nigga is in your face telling them, yeah, man, yeah, your girl, man, she tried to throw that thing on me, man. You know me, man. I, ain't, I wouldn't even do nothing less. She tried to throw that thing on me. That means he took that. You know what I mean? That means he took that. Man, nah, man, you know, I wouldn't even do nothing like that. Anytime someone got it, if it's somebody you really hang with and you know them, they ain't got it. Hey, come on, nigga, I wouldn't do no shit like that. All right, cool, that's it. But when they start saying it multiple times, man, you know, they tried, they tried to bribe me, but you know me, man, I wouldn't even, nigga, I know you, Nico, you would take that money. And that's why I think that Don Carter already is looking at Nico as, uh, hey, man, you have potential liability also, just like Felicia was. But in this instance, all we can do is go off of what Don Carter seen and what we assume he knows. And I'm assuming that whatever uh, Noma is saying and whatever Nico is saying, he don't trust either one of them. He's using both of them. Oh, uh, my dog Eric is back. What up, Eric? I told you, if I'm Nico, I'm taking the $50,000. I'm taking $50,000. I'm going to Don Carter. I'm telling Don Carter straight up, look, just, just picture this. It's just me and my dog, Eric. You know what I'm saying? I talked to my dog, Eric, on the day-to-day. -day. Hey, Eric, look, I ain't going to lie to you, man. No one that came up, she offered me 50000 You know, they trying to set me up. I told them a million dollars. So what you want to do? You want me to uh, have them set you up for the million or try to get like half of the million now, and then we split that half a million? Okay, bet. Fuck. Let's split the half a billion. Then. 250, 250. Now I still already got my 50. Like, nigga, I went and negotiated the deal. So I got 50,000, but we can we can split that 500,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm gonna tell them, look, I want a million dollars to set you up. I need 500,000 up front, and then 500,000 once I deliver. When we get that 500,000 from them, as soon as they hand over the 500,000, boom, we bust the dough in on their ass, waving the faux faux. Now we got a half a mil that's 500,000 250 to you 250 to me we get them locked up and off the street that's how you got to roll with your people you see what i'm saying so i would have told if i'm nico i would have told don carter i got 50,000 from him to to broker this deal just so he know i ain't hiding nothing like nigga i'm telling you i'm getting money just like you getting money i'm getting money too we both dirty at this point there ain't no more like one person being dirty, ain't, there's no more dirt that you can do than another person that's going to make them dirtier than you. In the court of law, we all dirty. You feel me? 
we all dirty. Now you might get like, you might get 30 without a possible. I might get 15 with a possible. So, I mean, it's going to be different in that aspect, but you my supervisor, but I'm letting you know I got 50. But there's a potential for both of us to get 250 on our, you know what I'm saying, our Mayor Eric Adams shit. You know what I mean? This is a potential for us to get you. We could be on our mayor, uh, Eric Adams. We could be, we could be on them, Eric Adams. We can get some money now. I know some people right now. If you want to, if you, hey, if y'all want to make some money, I know some people we can make some money. It's a real deal right now. If you want to be, I, I, I know some people we can make some money. Now, is it legitimate? Probably not. Will you get in trouble? Well, you probably will. Am I going to participate? More than likely, no. But I know some people, you want to get some money. I know some people you get some money with. You gonna get you get you you, you, you can, hey you be bossed up by tomorrow. I I can I can pretty much guarantee you at least fifteen bands. You you could be in the game by tomorrow. It's just risky. But I ain't gonna participate. I'm just saying I know some people that know some people. You feel me? Six degrees of separation. I know some people that know some people that can get you some money. But hey, I know that I ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> so Don Carter is sitting here and him and Nico. I think Nico is just doing the Nico's on some player shit. He ain't gonna. I I mean, Kendall says that he's gonna flip. I haven't seen it unless they do it in the last episode where he like helps out Tariq. Because at this point, it's kind of like Noma's on one side, Davis is on one side. Davis is like, I mean, I got geez Louise Carter. Carter smoking a cigarette, and he basically told Noma, man, who the fuck you talking to? Sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas. For real, for real. Sometimes you gotta tell a motherfucker, hey, who you talking to? Who you who you talking to like that? And then Noma walked off. She had to call Kane because you hey, don't try that around here. Don't try that around here. The next time we see Don Carter is actually at the church now. You would think Don Carter wouldn't have. Even like if we're being honest, I know it, it, it sounds like, man, you're doing too much. But even now, when I go home from work, I don't take the same route every day. I switch it up. Sometimes I drive around. I mean, I don't even think that. Like, I, I know for sure ain't no one like following me home. But it was just like growing up in Kansas City. You was like, man, you couldn't take the same route all the time. If you start taking that same route, going to the same like car wash and stuff, people will start seeing your car. It only takes one time for someone to spot you over there. I used to be in a lot of dumb shit when I was growing up, especially between the ages of 17 to about 22. Well, all the way up until 24. I mean, I had moved, but by that time, like, whenever I would come back to the city. So, like, you always had to move in a certain type of way because you didn't want people to see your car. You don't want to go to certain car washes more than once or twice. So you just had to take, like, different routes. But even now when I leave work, when I go home, I might, like, on certain days, I might go directly home. The other days, I might go down, go around the mall, you know what I'm saying, go up the street and then go to the crib. I don't know, man. It's just it's instilled in me. It's like, man, don't just go straight home because you never know who's watching. Like, of course, man, I'm I'm old now, man. I'm old, washed up. I ain't into none of that nonsense. I seen niggas I had issues with when uh when I was in Kansas City. Like they they ain't on nothing. I ain't on nothing, man. We old now. Like it ain't shit is what it is. So, but it's just just something you do. But you would think Don Carter, who fucks with the roofless streets, wouldn't go to the church every Saturday at four o'clock in the second confessional every single. There's no way. There's no way you can do this. Like. Even going to work in the morning time, nine times out of 10, I'm taking the same route, but man, every now and then I switch it up and go the opposite route. But there's no way Don Carter is going up here every week. But anyway, 
Don goes in here. And he's he's giving seven Hail Marys. Dear Lord, for I have sinned. I got the streets on lock, but it's just weighing on my spirit, knowing that the drugs are flowing in and the money I should not. I, I promise you, I should not. And I know better. I should not honor thy cash as like I do. But Lord, when you walking around with 15,000 cash tax free, it just does something to a spirit. I got this vest on. Can't nobody touch me. I make moves. I got the most beautiful women, but Lord, I'm doing all of this by your good graces. I need you to look over me for I have sinned, but sinning just comes with our free, our free roam. Like everything I'm doing is I, Lord, I, I really want you to forgive me how I'm moving so reckless out here. I know everything that I'm doing has already been pre-written for me. You already know, but we all have free will. And sometimes my free will is getting this money. And I know I shouldn't be putting this money over my integrity and my morals. But Lord, let me tell you, oh, $45,000, $50,000 a month, that, that's it just does something to you with the price of living, the cost of living going up every single day. I got to get in these streets and hustle, Lord. I please, I just want you to forgive me for I have sinned. I want you to look over my wife and make sure that I can, I can find a way out of this. I just ask for your forgiveness because I know it's frowned upon amongst these mortals down here, but I can't leave the game alone. The game needs me, Lord. I just want you to look over me and my task force and make sure that we all make it home at the end of the evening. And I want you to give me the strength to find all the drug dealers and get them off the streets, even if it means I got to tax them 35%, because 35% to my pocket is better than no percent to my pocket. And out of that 35%, I'm going to give my 10% to the church, Lord. You know, you know me. Come on now. You know me, $50,000 a month. You know I'm, I'm, you know I'm good for five bands. You know I'm, Lord, you know I'm good for five bands. I'm putting five bands in the collection plate if I get a $50,000 a month. You ain't even got to question me. You already know that thing going in there, big face hundreds, nothing less than a hundred. If you see something less than a hundred in there, Lord, you can call me a, uh, ooh, you know what you can call me. I ain't going to say it in here. You already done got me on a couple of cities since, since. But I ain't swearing in the Lord's house. You know I'm not doing that, Lord. No, 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 no. But, Lord, I just hope you give me the strength that I can lock these niggas up. If these niggas get out of line, if these niggas sell dope to civilians, Lord, I just hope you give me the handcuffs of the heavens above. I'm talking about the handcuffs. The steel is so cold it burns a mother. And ring around their wrist when I lock them up. Lord, you hear me? I'm you hear me? I'm trying to make sure these Negroes don't see the light of day, Lord. Please just give me the strength to lock these niggas up if they don't give me my 35% so I can give my 10% to the church. In your name, I pray. Amen. Put your hands up. Oh, shit. Tariq didn't call me. Tariq didn't call me. David then just gave his confession to the Lord. And now Tariq didn't call him. Lord, the devil. Look, the devil works, but the Lord works harder. The devil is working overtime today. I just did 19 hell marriage. I just told the Lord to give me the strength to get these niggas off the street. And these niggas is hemming me up. Wait a minute, Tariq. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know something about you. What you know? I'm surprised you and your fucking junky ass friend. Lord, please forgive me. You know, I'm just doing I'm just doing this to arrest them, Lord. Lord, I'm just doing this to arrest these. Mm -hmm. I know about you and your junkie friend. Yeah. 
Did the name Zion ring a bell? Zion? Yeah, Zion. What do you know about Zion? No, what do you know about Zion, Tariq? I heard you guys rearranged his face. Plastic surgery, huh? You pushed his muffin cap back, Blue. What are you talking about, Dodd? I'm Tariq fucking St. Patrick. You think you can stand with me? Oh, Tariq. I don't think I... <laughs> you think you can stand with me is the question. Turn around, nigga. Put your hands behind your back. So Don Carter then flipped the script. Tariq had to drop. But guess what? When Don Carter went in there, in the confessional, and did his 19 Hail Marys, he asked the Lord for forgiveness. Tariq went in there with a gun. Tariq didn't ask for no forgiveness. Tariq went in there like he was the devil. The Lord blessed Don Carter. He was looking over Don Carter and gave him the strength to pull the Uno reverse card on Tariq St. Patrick <laughs> and take the gun out of Tariq's hand. And now the scum of New York City is in the back of a police car with the coldest handcuffs, the handcuffs that were sent from heaven. This is why prayer is so important. Don Carter went in there. He asked for forgiveness. And one thing we can't do is deny what the Lord has set out for you. Don Carter went in there, did his Hail Marys, and he had protection. Tariq went in there and sat down with a damn silencer and didn't say anything. And now look at him. Now look at him. Mm, mm, mm. Don't worry about it. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I'll make it make sense for you. You thought I was in there doing Hail Marys for nothing? You thought I was giving my confession to the priest for nothing? No, I was asking for prayer. And Don Carter is covered. He's covered by the Lord. Yeah, he takes Tariq out of here and he calls Noma. Well, it looks like we got us a problem. Monet and Tariq, they are alive. <laughs> they kidnapped Tariq. <laughs> Braden and Effie chase him down. They end up running them off the street, though. And Don Carter gets towed up. Boom! Braden on that junk. And when they all wake up, Don Carter is tied up, and Tariq is knocked out. At first, though, when I was looking, I was thinking they left the car out there. At first, I was thinking they put Tariq in the back. I thought, because they went over and they added, I don't even know how this car was still functioning, but, well, I guess it just went through the windshield. But at first, I was thinking they put Tariq in the back of the Impala. But they actually brought Don Carter's charger over here too. Cause I was thinking, I was like, man, they just left the car out there and took him. But they did it, they did it right. They brought the car over here too. So they wake Tariq up. Huh? What happened? Who the? Who that called my name? Who the? Who the? Who the? <laughs> Let me show you what Don Carter like. Don Carter like. What are you gonna do, Tariq? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, three what you gonna do nigga what you gonna do you gonna kill me huh what you gonna do three this you gonna do you gonna unalive me <laughs> Well, just like I know about that motherfucking tape, <laughs> you bitch ass nigga, you. <laughs> <laughs>
if uh my task force don't hear back from me on the hour every hour, you know they gonna turn this city red, nigga, right? <laughs> If you down in Texas, down in New Mexico, <laughs> maybe even Oklahoma. <laughs> if you see a fire ant hill, go kick it over. Kick over a fire ant hill, put your hand in there. <laughs> see how them fire ants bite your ass, nigga. <laughs> if I if I don't respond back on the hour every hour, you know they're gonna be on your ass like some fucking fire ants, right? What you gonna do, man? They're gonna paint this town red, Tariq. What's your next move, nigga? <laughs> do what you do, nigga, but just remember I got that tape on you whole ass niggas. You and Braden, the fucking junkie. Yeah, I got a tape on you niggas. <laughs> oh, niggas got me tied up like they doing something over me. Oh, god damn. Y'all niggas got tied up. Oh, I got their head fucked up. Someone move my hat back, man. I can't see you niggas, man. <laughs> <laughs> These dumbass niggas think they gonna do something with me. <laughs> Tariq, what you gonna do, nigga? What you gonna do, nigga? You gonna pull the trigger? You gonna pull the trigger, you bitch ass nigga? You you gonna pull that trigger or what? <laughs> yeah, F, y'all know about you going to Stanford. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got footage on your ass too on the roof, nigga. You remember, you remember Officer Kamal Tate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sent all his files over to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His death. <laughs> Accidental death, right? I got tapes on all you niggas. I know about you, Effie. Yeah, I know about you. And you know, you know a girl named Lauren? You you know Lauren. Yeah, I know you know Lauren. We all know Lauren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was investigating that case too before Jenny got it. Yeah, I knew where you was at the whole time. <laughs> hey Brayden. Hey Brayden. Hey, fucking junkie. Come here, come here, come here. Let me, let me, let me, hey, white boy. Hey, hey, Caucasian male. Come here, come here. Let me talk to you. Yeah, yeah, I know about you. In your left pocket inside your jacket. I know what you got in there. When you guys took that security out, who you think was watching y'all? Why do you think I came in so late? I seen everything y'all did. Y'all didn't account for the security camera that was in the goddamn security room, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, that's the problem with you dumbass kids. Y'all motherfuckers think y'all smarter than everybody. Da da da, y'all not. <laughs> hey Effie, check that check that stand for the email you got today. Yeah yeah yeah, that came from the ID department. <laughs> it don't say Stanford.edu, does it? What does it say on there? What does it say on there? It say Stanford.pdx. Stand for not the police department, you dumb motherfucker. I got footage on all you niggas. <laughs> I oh, I ain't even tell y'all. I knew you niggas was working for Noma, right? You know that 35% I'm taxing y'all niggas. <laughs> Tariq, when y'all got rid of the Russians, we already knew it was y'all. Guess what? Me and Noma sent you niggas up there. We knew you figured it out. But we sent the Russians up there to get them motherfuckers out the way because we knew you'd be able to handle them because the Russians were thin because, guess what? The Kamal Tate body? <laughs> we told your boy Rashad Tate that the Russians did it. <laughs> Here, here's my secret. The gun that I used was Kamal Tate's gun. It made it look like it was a motherfucking murder revenge plot. <laughs> what you gonna do, Tariq? Wake your bitch ass up, Tariq. <laughs> My name is fucking Detective Don Carter. Nigga, I'm not a Rudy Pooh, nigga. I'm not Jabari Parker. You, yeah, you know Jabari? Yeah, yeah, you're the cop. Nigga, we seen you. We got footage of you committing that murder, nigga. <laughs> we did an investigation on uh does this name let me let me let me see if this refreshes your memory. <laughs> you niggas are sloppy. <sighs> I'm just gonna give you a little rundown of names. I'm about a um a gentleman by the name of Junior. <laughs> well, his mama. <laughs> 
<laughs> you won't believe this one, Tariq. You won't believe this one. <laughs> you remember when I first met you and I told you I could smell the stench of your bitch ass daddy, Jay St. Patrick? <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this one, nigga. You ain't gonna believe this one. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up. <laughs> you remember that bitch your daddy was fucking with, Angela? <laughs> Well, guess what? Her sister. <laughs> Her sister came to me and told me, you know, you, you gonna sit your pants on this one, Tariq. You gonna sit your pants on this one. <laughs> that bitch Angela had a sister named Paz, right? <laughs> Her son is Junior. <laughs> Her son, Junior. <laughs> He had a thumb drive. He had a thumb drive, and there was a lawyer named Proctor that had a thumb drive that gave it to his daughter. <laughs> we got you, nigga. <laughs> we got your daddy, nigga. There's a white boy named Tommy Egan in Chicago. We know about him, too. <laughs> We've been playing like we didn't know. We've been watching him fuck up out there. See, we let the Chicago division take over. We let them get all the dirt because guess what? I've been working with the FBI, nigga, the CIA, the Homeland Security, nigga. I was on the Diddy raid, nigga. I've seen the thousand bottles of baby oil. We got you, Tariq. I know you probably wondering how the fuck this happened to me. Well, let me tell you something. The Ponzi scheme that you had with the Westerns <laughs> and that bullshit ass billionaire RSJ. Well, guess what? RSJ has been an informant for the last 14 years. We knew about the Ponzi scheme, nigga. That's why when we had him go over there, we had him take the QCP from you so we can get that into government ownership. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do, Tariq? What you gonna do now, nigga? <laughs> oh, Braden, your daddy's been an informant for the last 20 years. We already knew that your brother was <laughs> illegally running a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and Effie, your mama, your mama, <laughs> guess what? We've been watching you too. The guy, Richard, the guy, Richard, that you lied to. You lied to your mama about that you said was uh, assaulting you or fondling you or whatever you're doing. <laughs> Richard has been an undercover agent for a year. So when you told on Tariq and Choke, why do you think I said I could smell James St. Patrick on you? I've been following you niggas from the beginning of time. I know where Tasha Green is in witness protection. I know who Yaz is. Guess what? I've been to the house and I've actually briefed them on the concerns of them talking to you guys after two marshals were unalived in New York City by one Tommy Egan. I know everything on you guys. So for you to think that you're going to kidnap me and get away with some bullshit like this, you're going to have to think a little bit harder. And when it comes to Davis, guess what? Guess who filled his brother in with the information in about Cooper Sachs? <laughs> he was my office, nigga. I run New York City. I told you, I told Kamal Tate, New York City is mine for the motherfucking take it. And you think I'm going to let some degenerate like you bring me and my whole operation down? Nigga, you got another thing coming. Effie, your best bet is to go to the motherfucking California right now because believe me, if I don't report in in the next 27 minutes, they will be looking around the city. And if you didn't know, there is a tracker on that vehicle. So my vehicle sitting here for the last 25, 30 minutes, they got the vicinity covered. So it's best you niggas let me go right now. Oh, it's going to get real ugly for you. Because remember one thing, Don Carter is the only nigga that can save the day. All right. Feel free to do what y'all want with this information. But y'all niggas, I'm about to take a nap. Y'all niggas had me laughing tonight. <laughs> Let me say, y'all niggas had me laughing tonight. My name is Modi J. 
that's the end of the administrative story right there. Don't nobody break a showdown like Mo break a showdown because Mo break a showdown has shows supposed to be broken down. Man, you tell me somebody that can tell you a story off the top of their head like that and make that shit make sense. There ain't nobody that can do what the fuck I do, man. I'm one of a kind. I'm a unique individual, nigga. That's what I do, nigga. That's what I do. That's Don Carter's story right there, man. That's Don Carter's story right there, man. Y'all can't fuck with me. Y'all can't fuck with the police. That's me. Off the top of the dome. We could do a whole spinoff with Don Carter. We can make it seem like Don Carter knew everything that was going on in the power universe. Technically, he does know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Derry B said he's handcuffed. Yeah, I did that whole thing handcuffed. Handcuffed. Come on, man. You got to hit that like button. Hit that. You got to give me a subscribe, man. I just gave y'all like a, like a, like a 20 minute off the dome storyline off of all the information we already know in the power universe, man. Come on, man. I do this shit, man. This is all I do, man. I just sit around. I just think of storylines. Like what could happen? How could Don Carter get out of this? I'm just thinking of scenarios, man. But that's the administrative group. We have five hours now. We got free time now. Fuck it. We here now.